This Lash Wars web series is brought to you and sponsored by the Nisa Association, The Lash Collection, Sweet Lash, Illumino Lashes, Artistic Lash, Alicia from eyelashextensions.co.nz and Joy from Brisbane Lashes. Here's a special mention to the Nisa Association sponsors who helped make the Las Vegas Lash Wars event possible. In episode one, we introduced you to the creators of Lash Wars, Amber and Tia Luttrell. We also introduced you to some of the judges and the first six contestants of Round One Classic. To remind you of what the contestants are competing for, the Lash title, an elite glam core light, and an award. The first day of the International Beauty Show has opened and at the Lash Wars booth the tables are ready, the judges are waiting and Tia Luttrell and Amber are running last minute errands. Round 1 classic contestants can be seen waiting for the competition to start. Before the competition starts, Classic Round 1 contestants have some time to set up their workstations. So last night in the hotel room I was packing and repacking just to make sure that I had it all together because I did bring a lot of gear. I uh, I was thinking, oh no, is this too much? But I brought everything that I needed that I was comfortable with. At first I was thinking maybe I should do sparingly, you know, for weight with packing. But I thought, you know, I'm most comfortable using my setup that I work with every day. I do lashes every day. And so I said, you know what, I'm just going to take a gamble and I'm going to bring all my stuff. And I practiced with that over and over again. And that's how I prepared. All classic contestants must use Sugar Lash extensions and glue. Contestants can use any of their preferred tools, such as tweezers, adhesive surfaces, whatever their normal setup consists of. Nisa also has a back bar setup for the contestants, consisting of dental mirrors, spoolies, disinfectant wipes and cotton rounds. Many of the items in the back bar have been provided by the sponsor, Sugar Lash, for optional use. Contestants prep their clients' eyelashes by cleansing, priming and taping down their lower lashes. The contestants have already completed one eye on their model, so most likely know the size of lashes they require to complete the second eye. It looks like Olivia's model has clumps of mascara in her lashes. Olivia is using her fingers to remove the clumps of mascara, an interesting choice over using eye makeup remover. The contestants make their last minute preparations and adjustments. <music> Olivia is removing the lashes from the strip in the tray and will be using the lashes as loose lashes. looking to challenge myself so I thought Lash Wars would be a great way to do that. Um, make sure I'm on my A game and meet other lash artists. I'm passionate about lash extensions because I think they give women confidence and it really changes their appearance and it's a small thing that we can do for ourselves to make us feel good about how we look every day. I prepped my model on Wednesday before we came down on Thursday so I was lashing until 1am on Wednesday night and then we came down on Thursday. When I have a client come in 
and they explain to me what kind of lashes they want. I love to create that look for them and see how awesome they feel after when they open their eyes and they see that vision come to life and they leave excited and happy. I feel like their inner beauty shines because they have more confidence. At the very beginning of the competition, Rosalind's eyelash extension wouldn't set and stay in place. Bearing in mind that the contestants are not using their usual glue that they are used to, some adjustment to the sugar lash glue is required. Rosalind did a lot of research on her model's face shape. She wanted to incorporate two curls into her lash design. The model has slight almond shaped eyes, but really large eyes. Rosalind decided to do a D curl on the outer and inner lashes and a C curl in the middle portion of her eyes. The D curl helped open up the model's eyes on the outside. By using the 0.10mm thickness in D lashes, Rosalind made sure they wouldn't weigh down her model's natural eyelashes. The C curl used was in 0.15mm thickness, the length in 10, 11 and 12, giving length and thickness to her model's lashes. 45 minutes later into the competition, we can see that Rosalind has been wiping off the excess glue on the iPad, which has probably been helping her with adhesive control. Right beside the Live Lash Wars competition, there was another booth that had women screaming for free products. For some of the Lash Wars contestants, that was just a little distracting. The only challenge was the screaming fans. <laughs> that was a little bit crazy. So my ears are ringing, but I think it was great. This is Rosalind's final classic set, which has been judged and assessed. Leanne has come from Hawaii with her fiancé and two children, Jojo and Jia. Leanne prepared her model's left eye before the competition. The eyelash industry is booming big time back home in Hawaii um, and it's been really great to see it just expand and grow. Um, but the girls back at home, all of our clients, um, they really don't believe in short lashes. Everybody wants them really long and dramatic. So I really don't do anything less than about a 16 millimeter. Um, so that's why when we were doing the competition and the longest was 13, it was kind of foreign to me because I was just like, where's the 14, 15, and 16, you know, but. Well, definitely passionate about eyelash extensions because I've been doing it for about maybe seven years now. And um, I definitely find a joy in accentuating um, beauty to women. Um, it's a great feeling. Um, and I really like to make sure that it's quality versus quantity. That's definitely a, a big thing that we have. I honestly think NISA is an amazing association and I think a lot of technicians that you know do believe in quality over quantity um, have been waiting for this for years um, because we do have a lot of technicians out there that unfortunately will learn off of a video and you know do it the next day at the salon and you know, those are the types of things that we do get in on a normal basis um, where we do have to do corrective work, you know. So I think this is, I think this is important because it, it's time for us to take action um, and be able to, you know, make more technicians knowledgeable on the service, um, you know, be able to regulate more of the service in, you know, the states and make sure everything is, you know, correct. Leanne has a story about how she ended up entering Lash Wars. My, uh, my partner and my fiancé had entered me first uh, without me knowing um, while well, I was in the midst of still thinking about if I was going to enter or not. She was surprised. I just came in and said, hey, you're entered in last war, so we're going to go through with it. Um, she cares about her clients. I mean, even if somebody comes off the street and says, I have a problem with another company that does lashes, she'll go and take care of them and clean them up and get them on the right track with our lash care. Um, she cares about everything, detail. I mean, she's a perfectionist. Sometimes you think she has OCD, she's like always cleaning and keep keeping everything clean, so um, she's great. It's about caring about the customer, what they want, and also taking care of their every need, you know, and that's what she does. Our boutique is definitely a more of like a chic Balinese style. Um, I don't like to have our technicians blocked off in a room, you know, I want them to be having that openness type of feeling. Um, 
I mean, it just comes down to even the music. We constantly get, you know, compliments about the music that we play at the shop. And sometimes, like, boyfriends or husbands will come in and they'll be like, I just want to come in here and just hang out, you know, just because your music is so good. I was like, oh, that's cool. <laughs> what's your name? Georgia. And what's your name? Gia. I'm five years old. And can you say I'm six years old? I'm six years old. That is somebody in your family does eyelash extensions. Who, who does eyelashes? Mommy. Leanne and Rain are celebrating 11 years together and also getting married later this year. Um, we met <laughs> 12, about 12 years ago. Uh, he was a bartender at a restaurant or you know a bar in Waikiki and I was one of the cocktail waitresses. So I asked her to play on a co-ed volleyball team. And I, I don't even tall. play volleyball. So it was part of the union um, like volleyball t uh, tournament and I did not even play volleyball. So we needed a girl <laughs> to make a team, so I asked her. So it was kind of <laughs> funny. Yeah, so that opened up my relationship with her. In December, uh, we've been together now for 11 years. And he's my biggest supporter and number one fan. <laughs> um, we'll be getting married at one of the, um, the hotels in Waikiki, and we're expecting about maybe 250 people to attend already. So it's getting big. Yeah, it's going to be a lot of fun. And I mean, our main objective is to definitely entertain our guests more than us celebrating our, yeah. own, our own wedding, so. You can see Leanne is isolating the model's lashes. Notice the little amount of glue she is using. Um, I would say the challenge, um, I would say, is just being um, the table height and the chair height. Um, I just really had to adjust to because, you know, back, you know, in our studio at home, uh, you know, we have everything, you know, adjusted in height according to, you know, the, the technician. So I just had to adjust to that. So it was a little um, difficult at first, but I really got my momentum going after the first 30 minutes and I was okay. After one hour of classic lashing, Leanne's lashes will be judged and assessed. I'm from Dallas and so service got started uh, a little earlier than in the rest of the country over there. So I've seen really bad lashes. I've seen a lot of really bad lashes. I was getting the service um, back in 2009 so it was something that I loved and once I started doing it and we realized that it, um, it was very different from technician to technician. So I just, I'm passionate about quality my technique and I just want to make sure that I'm doing the absolute best kind of lashes possible. Jordan is off to a great start. Jordan's model has smaller lashes which can be harder to work with. The lash that Jordan has just applied has not set on the natural lash. Jordan chooses to remove the extension. In a couple days I'll do the power volume, which is the new big, the multi-dimensional lashes, that's the new thing. So I think I'm pretty good with the classic, but there's a whole new technique that's uh, coming that I need to make sure that I know. From what I see, once you start getting lashes, it's always more, 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 longer, fuller, and so I'm that client, you know, I want more, and they're like, you don't have any lashes left, like, you're tapped out. So this, you know, multi-dimensional technique is for either the women that are wanting as full as possible, or, you know, I deal with a lot of older women that they just don't have as much to work with, and so it's something that we can enhance, you know, their look. Oh, it takes, yeah, it takes years, and it's just, you know, we all laugh about beauty school. It's not necessarily what you learn in school or even in class. It is, you know, working on clients and the different issues that you encounter and how, you know, how to educate your clients. And, and with, you know, there's a lot of chemicals going on near the eye, and everyone's responding differently. So it's just, you know, in knowledge and, you know, different situations for different people. But I'm excited to be here. The girls have been great. So, you know, it's a, it was a great opportunity to meet others that are passionate about it and they, want it, they take it seriously. Each lash technician has their own preferred lashing tools. Jordan is using one of the original glue holders, a jade stone. Jordan applies some of the final lashes to her classic set as the competition hour has almost run out.
As Jordan finishes up round one, she looks relieved. Jordan's set of classic extensions will be assessed and judged. As you can see, the judges have gone through the lashes and checked for stickies. If these lashes were to be brushed back into place with a spoolie, they would look neat and tidy. So my name is Courtney Beeler and I am the owner and founder of Sugar Lash. When I first heard that there was going to be an eyelash competition in North America, I kind of just jumped in with two feet. I'm really, really excited that we're able to have such a high caliber of not only um, competitors, but also judges and you know suppliers and all that stuff. So I knew I wanted to be right in there and one of those top tier sponsors to support and help the industry grow. Sugar Lash is the main product sponsor of the Classic category. We have volume supplies and classic supplies, um, but today, yeah, we're using all Sugar Lash products and they did really well. So we have all of our lash supplies, that's lash extensions, adhesives, tweezers, sanitation, safety, setup, basically anything that you would possibly need. We have a new color line of lashes coming out. Those are called our eye light, so it's like a highlight for the lashes, the eye light line. So some colored lashes in volume and classic. And then we have our Rectify brow extensions, which is our newest thing. We have online training for that, products, and all that kind of stuff, and then we're growing from there. You know what, I think Nisa has been so needed for so many years. Since the industry started, we probably should have had an association off the get-go, but we didn't. And so I feel like this is just a, you know, a long overdue thing that I just want to support wholeheartedly because as a trainer, that was the whole reason that I got into training in the first place is because we saw so much damage and we saw so many um, poor trainings that we needed to elevate. And, and that's kind of why I stepped away from just having a lash launch to just do lashes and into that training and distribution to just elevate the products and the training and the safety and sanitation and all that stuff. And Nisa kind of goes hand in hand with that. So I thought the lash battle went great. I feel confident that I did the best I could do in the time allotted. So fingers crossed. Um, coming out of the competition, I definitely felt a big weight off of my shoulders. It was, it was pretty stressful because we were, you know, having to do the one eye in one hour um, and my model actually had, I swear, a gazillion lashes so I was kind of panicking if I was going to be able to finish and mimic the other side but I just kind of had to just really drown out everything, the noise around me, all the people watching and just, you know, just really concentrate on what I was doing. You know, I've come that far and, you know, flew all this way so I better do a good job. Want to watch more? Subscribe to Galaxy Dreaming to watch Slash Wars Episode 2 Part 2. Life is short, your lashes don't have to be. There's only a few companies training worldwide. And they're kind of different. There's ones that are geared more towards, you know, people that just have a little bit sparse of brows and then they're attaching it to the brow hair, the existing hair. We're a little bit different in that we have geared it towards medical condition, patients. So people going through chemo or people that have um, hypothyroidism is a big one and they have absolutely nothing. So we've developed with the medical team a special adhesive and that's the first of its kind in the world. It's actually been used for over a decade for um, instead of stitches. Um, that it can go directly on the skin. It's bacteriostatic. It's got all those great properties and it's great for use directly on the skin. So we rebuild brows for women that could never have brows. Yeah. They feel great, yeah. So how long they last depends on their type of skin and also if you're attaching it to the hair or to the skin. So if you were doing someone with hypothyroidism that had zero brows, they would get um, seven to 21 days depending on how oily they are and everything else. If it's attached to the hair, three to four weeks easily. So yeah, it just depends what you're, what you're attaching it to. Thank you to all of our web series sponsors. For more information or to register for an upcoming Lash Wars event, log in to www.nisa.org. You can also find Nisa via www.lashwars.com.